Welcome to our executive interview series on strategies for moving into the AI era. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and we're here today to talk with Dr. Glenn Johnson, a Chief Technology Officer for the Department of State and Microsoft's Federal Security CTO, Steve Fail, about ways that AI is enhancing process improvement and security at federal organizations. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And um, Glenn, I'd, I'd like to start with you, if I may. Where is artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, helping your organization improve security and also process improvement at the Department of State? Yeah, I think that uh, the Department of State has really embraced the role of artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, large language models uh, uh, in its process improvement. And we're seeing almost uh, all of the management side of the house, including those doing cybersecurity, uh, embracing these tools. And now we're seeing the policy side, particularly when it comes to large language models and uh, language translation embrace the use of artificial intelligence. I think the use specifically to artificial intelligence is just the realization that uh, the pace at which uh, we need to react, that we need to check things, that we need to uh, move from producing data to informing the decision maker to actually making decisions and making the appropriate decision at all hours of the day and night uh, moves us into the, the realm of uh, automated decision making of which uh, the premier tool is uh, AI. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Steve, let me switch the conversation over to you. Talk to us a little bit about how you see our artificial intelligence and machine learning helping agencies really address the issues of detection, response, and overall security. Well, there are really two places where we're seeing artificial intelligence make a huge difference right now. Uh, one of them is that uh, we are improving the accuracy of detections with AI. And so we have used AI in, in many of our products for many years, uh, but now we're getting to the point where these AI detections are uh, substantial and accurate to the point where disruptive automation can now uh, be utilized as a part of the artificial intelligence. We recently published uh, information about ransomware campaigns that we have proactively uh, disrupted within uh, moments after the attack, uh, really diminishing and mitigating any possible impact uh, with the organizations that had the ransomware. And so traditionally these, these ransomware operations would sort of move unchecked through the environment until a point in time at which a security team could go hands on keyboard and respond. Uh, but in this case, because we're able to have a very high fidelity detection with some new advancements in AI, we're able to feed automation and disrupt those campaigns in real time. And this really gives the defenders a strategic advantage, an asymmetric advantage, if you will, for the first time um, in cyber history where attackers have to go hands on keyboard, but defenders do not. Well, this next question is for both of you. Glenn, let me start with you. What, what are the issues that agencies are facing, and maybe the Department of State in particular, in really being able to leverage and capitalize on AI? Well, I mean, the first thing is we have to get the in infrastructure in place, and uh, we're doing that. And the federal sector, uh, our, we have our own federal cloud, which is we where we prefer to operate. Things are generally... Uh, uh, available in the commercial cloud first, so we kind of have to wait a little bit before we get those in into our federal space. Uh, second thing, we have an enormous challenge in terms of uh, uh, educating our workforce, particularly our executive leadership, because a lot of these uh, improvements in that we can achieve through artificial intelligence require that we do things differently, that we make different judgments, that we accept certain risk, and those always have to be made at uh, a very senior executive level. So part of what we need to do is uh, start the education of our executive teams and engage them in the conversation saying, here is what we can do with these new AI tools. Uh, here are the risks and here are the rewards and uh, here are the mitigations. And of course, we're with the executive order, we're very concerned about the ethical uses, making sure that we always First and foremost, make sure that uh, we're using AI in an ethical and a responsible manner. And Steve, what additional issues are you uh, encountering with federal agencies? 
I think selecting use cases uh, becomes a, a challenge. Uh, as Glenn mentioned, uh, working through the use cases in a responsible way, selecting those use cases that have the highest benefit and the lowest risk. Um, and that's something that is, is addressed in the recent um, executive order on AI as well. Uh, how do we maximize the benefit? Um, looking at that, I think that use case selection, it's an understanding of the actual risks versus perceived risks. And then uh, really being able to define that risk in a meaningful way and, and understanding what designs and architectures um, behind each of these use cases could possibly minimize or mitigate those risks altogether. Um, so as we do use case selection, um, as we walk through this with vari uh, varying agencies, um, understanding that this particular use case, in fact, uh, is not susceptible to these particular types of AI risks, that all AI is not the same, um, and that we can be very selective in what secure by design looks like, and we can implement trusted patterns for securing these AI models, um, and of course all of that is applica applicable to security AI as well. And then lastly, gentlemen, I'd be interested to hear uh, what recommendations would you have for federal agencies to be able to capitalize on AI uh, more effectively and faster throughout your organization? Uh, Glenn, if you'd start on that one. Well, I think the good news is, is the, the federal, the way the federal government does its budgeting, we request our budget three years in advance. So when the first executive order on artificial intelligence came out, executive order uh, 13960, uh, it wasn't built in anybody's budget. So good year, the good news now is it's past three years. We're getting into the point where budgets are now being allocated to specifically to artificial intelligence. Uh, I know in the Department of State we have a chief AI officer. We have a uh, responsible AI official. Uh, we have a CTO for AI, myself. Um, and so we're getting the organizations there. The second thing is, is um, we have sponsorship at the highest level. Uh, for AI projects in the department, uh, the Department of State has uh, two deputy secretaries, one for policy, one for management and resources. Uh, they collectively review all the AI, AI cases and then give specific tasking uh, to our organization, uh, uh, Center for Analytics and uh, IRM, uh, to set the priorities so that uh, we maximize the value. And I think all of this stuff shows a maturity of four years of effort uh, that we have done, and that's what needs to continue is to engage in the pilots, show success, brandish the, uh, the value of these things, and then move on to the next projects. And Steve? I think one thing that can really accelerate adoption is to take a look at the use cases that are highly targeted, where there are specific tasks um, that are valuable to, to utilize with AI. Um, as we look at the opportunity out there, those tasks may be something that uh, oftentimes it's easy to look at the things that are repetitious, things that uh, security analysts are doing today that you'd like to offload to AI. But there may be entirely other areas where large amounts of data have made certain problems untenable or unsolvable. Um, and those are really interesting use cases as well. And even if they involve a large amount of data, they don't necessarily involve a large amount of risk. Uh, so if there is automated analysis extraction that can be done on, on large data sets, um, this is now information that's valuable to defenders and information they likely wouldn't have had previously. Uh, so lots of opportunity to accelerate adoption, lots of opportunity to take on low risk projects and use cases, um, and really thinking outside the box to uh, what is the art of the possible with AI. Well, I appreciate those thoughts, and uh, I would just add one of the things that I found encouraging from a new study that FedScoop just released is the extent to which federal leaders, uh, by a margin of um, seven out of ten, felt that artificial intelligence, the, the, the benefits outweighed the risks. And though I think there's certainly important to put in the right guardrails, if you will, the inclination to really continue experimenting, you know, uh, was really encouraging to see. I think the other takeaway was just the importance of training. Uh, if there was other, another recommendation we're sort of seeing out there is the, the importance that all levels uh, across organizations get the necessary training to take advantage of and use AI responsibly. But I appreciate both of you joining us. Uh, Glenn Johnson and Steve Fail, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us today about the role of AI in the federal government. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.